Yeah, you're a good guy. You're a good guy. Say hello to the camera. Hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas. Today we're going to talk about poultry nutrition and a couple of things that um, have come up that, uh, that that people have asked me. And I thought, well, let's get into it in this video. So um, we're going to talk about a maggot trap for fly control and for additional protein. And we're going to talk about something I've called a chicken salad bowl. First of all, if you've just found this video by searching through YouTube, don't go away. I'm going to talk for a minute to the people that have watched my videos in the past. It's been a long run in between videos and a couple of things. It was cold. We've been very busy. I haven't felt good. Now just generally not feeling good. I don't know what it was, but it's gone away now, maybe because it's springtime. Uh, and also, and this is kind of an unfortunate thing, but three of our older dogs have died, and that, that uh, you know, we never had children, so the dogs are our children, and so we lost three of our older dogs. At 14 and 15, or 14 and 16, rather, which is how old two of them were, it's not that big of a deal. They were old, and they had a wonderful life, but that's kind of why you haven't seen a lot of videos. In the meantime, people keep commenting on my, um, my chicken feed videos, as well as all the others. And I've gotten the usual, what I say, the usual people complaining about soy for all these reasons. And a lot of times I think that these people complaining about soy and the use of soy in animal feed, they kind of remind me of that 3% of the planet that actually doesn't believe in climate change or man-made climate change, but climate change in general. They have a reason, but it's a coast-to-coast -coast AM kind of reason. It's not something you're going to open up and read from the University of Nebraska or Texas A&M or whatever. I haven't found anything definitive about not using soy. Now, people are probably going to inundate me with video links to uh, a guy with a tinfoil hat talking about all the horrible things that come from soy. But at any rate, there are alternatives, and if for no other reason, for the cost, because soy costs me $17 a bag. This is a ground soy. So if you can come up with a, a viable alternative and a, a green alternative, a carbon-free alternative to the soy protein, you're way ahead of the game. Now, you've already seen my video, or if you've just dropped by here, there is a video. Go, go to the main channel. There's a video on our mealworm farm. Tremendous source of something that's, you know, 60, 60 to 70 percent protein. We're going to talk about something even higher in protein today, and that's going to be the maggot trap. And we're going to talk about something that's a good source of graze for your poultry, uh, particularly if you live in a place like this where there isn't a lot of graze. Uh, so let me get into that in just a couple minutes, and um, we'll go from there. Well, you probably saw that bucket sitting next to me out there. Um, here it is again. This is just a regular five-gallon pickle bucket or whatever. Mine I bought from McCoy's, our, um, our local uh, building supply. But, um, you know, any five-gallon bucket uh, will work. And a maggot trap is simply a, a way of not catching the maggots. What, you, what it does... And we'll get into it a little more, but what it is as I go on in the video, what it's going to do is it's going to cause the flies to lay their eggs in the maggot trap. The fly says, oh, I've done my job. My job in the world is done. I've laid my eggs, and she goes off and dies somewhere. The male, um, he may be, I don't know what they do. I, I'm, I don't watch, um, I don't have time to watch uh, flies mate, but the male, he goes off, he feels he's done his job. They lay their eggs in the maggot trap, the eggs hatch in the maggot trap. The maggots, and I'll show you how this happens, but the maggots eventually work their way down to the ground where my chickens will be waiting to gobble up that 90, 90 plus percent protein treat that is a maggot. Now, the way we arrive at this is we're going to start with this, this bucket, then we're going to drill a whole bunch of holes in the bucket. <laughs> And so it goes for about 150 holes, and I'm going to spare you that, so let's move on ahead. And I'm back, and I've got my bucket all drilled out. Now let's discuss the dynamics of how this works, and then we'll assemble it. But um, what I've done 
is I've drilled, I have no idea how many holes in the, uh, in the bottom here. And along the bottom, the spot, bottom of the sides, I've drilled almost an equal number of holes <coughs> to stuff a dead rooster in, which is not a bad idea. Um, I've also got some bigger holes up further and some holes in the top. Then this one I lost the handle to, which is why we're using it for this, uh, uh, for a maggot trap. So I just hung, hung a, um, um, a wire on it. Now, what's going to happen is this is going to hang up somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 feet, 6 to 8 feet off the ground. I believe we're going to have this one up around 6 feet off the ground. So that's, and you don't have to picture it because we're going to do it in a couple minutes here, but it's going to be about 6 feet off the ground. Now what happens... I'm going to talk about this right now. You're going to put a little straw in the bottom of this. Uh, and straw is a good thing, or hay. Uh, in our case, we've got a bit of moldy hay that that stupid horse of ours won't eat. So I'm going to put some of that moldy hay in the bottom, probably up to right about where the holes are, and then it'll compress downwards. And that's kind of... Um, uh, it, it's, it's a buffer and it's a place for the flies and the maggots when they do hatch to kind of hide. And the middle section, this is the touchy one, and I've seen a bunch of videos from, um, let's just call them Deep South videos, uh, where people were building a maggot trap. And this one old boy said, yep, I had me a litter of puppies. And there weren't but two gyps in there, and there were eight males, so I just, I just browned them eight males and stuck them in there to make me a maggot trap. Another guy went out and, and legitimately he collected some roadkill. He found a dead raccoon, I think is what he found on the side of the road. Brought it back. Around here, and Cascade and I are going to go out in a little bit and do this, we've got so many jackrabbits and, ha and uh, hares around here, and they're a real issue for me uh, with anything I'm growing. So we'll go out and see if we can shoot one, but if we can't shoot uh, a jackrabbit for this, um, we've got some, um, I call it dog food, it was the internal organs of chickens that we processed and the internal organs of the pig that we just processed. Um, and I, I, we just missed the pig, so I didn't have, I wasn't able to get this together while we were processing the pig. So, or I would have used some of the internal organs of the pig. But I do have the dog food that I made cooked and ground up for the, for the two dogs that just died. They didn't have any teeth, so they had to have a liquefied food. Now they're gone and the other dogs don't need it, so I can put three or four packages of that in here. The thing is, you want something that's going to rot like a rooster. That's going to rot and stink a little bit, so it's not going to be right next to your back door. It's going to stink a little bit, it's going to attract the flies, the flies are going to get in there just like they do roadkill on the side of the road, or if you leave your sandwich sit out at a picnic too long, you'll have it covered with flies. <coughs> trying to lay their eggs in here. They'll get in, they'll lay their eggs in the rotting meat. Of course, the maggots hatch. They start feeding on it. When it's about time for them to pupate, what they do is they're going to work their way down through that hay, because their instinct is to go to the ground and burrow themselves in the ground while they pupate, then they'll come out as flies. So they burrow down and burrow down, that's where all these holes come in. They're, they're going to burrow until they can't burrow anymore. Well, they're going to burrow right through these holes. They're eventually going to hit these holes and they're going to drop down onto the ground. Well, once you've trained your chickens, and I'll show you that, once you've trained your chickens to know that maggots are going to drop down from there, your chickens will be hanging around out there, and if you've ever dropped them, just a, a grain of rice around your chickens, they're on it right away, or a piece of cracker or something you don't even think they saw. Their eyes are so quick. So they'll spot that maggot, hit the ground, they'll come and get it, and they'll eat it right up. They'll gobble it right up. But just in case, I've done something else that I'll show you in a few minutes uh, to prevent them from actually going into the ground. Even though if they do get in the ground, the chickens will be scratching there and scratch it all up. But I'll show you all that. So that's the dynamics of how one of these works. Almost anything that'll rot can be used. I imagine that you could use, you know, uh, peaches, pears, apples, things like that. You could use, um, you could use uh, some vegetables. I'm just not sure about flies and vegetables, and somebody can, can comment on that for everybody to read. Uh, but um, everything that I've said says use a dead animal. Um, so we're going to try to use a dead animal or this, this um, 
dead dog food now that we don't need. So let me get the rest of it done. I've got to build my hangman and get it ready, and I will show you in a couple minutes. Now another source of feed, free feed, or low-cost feed for your animals, for your chickens, your poultry, uh, is of course grasses and uh, any any kind of sprouts. Now Joel Salatin at Polyface, at Polyface Farms, we're going to get rid of a few of them by the way guys, so don't comment about them, we're going to get rid of them and eat them. But Joel Salatin at Polyface Farms uh, is is uh, one of the big proponents of pasturing your chickens, using a chicken tractor and pasturing them. But he's, uh, I believe, in Pennsylvania. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's in Pennsylvania, I believe, where he has grasses available, you know, two-thirds of the year. He has viable grass that he can pasture them on. Out here in the desert, we it is uh, right now, it's the end of April, and we haven't had rain since the second week of October. Uh, and our water is very low and precious, so I can't... I can't grow a huge crop of grass to pasture my animals on, even in a good time, let alone in a drought like this. So for me and for um, those of you with ornamentals or you've got your chickens in a chicken coop or in an enclosure uh, where you're not moving them around, this is an excellent idea, uh, especially for desert people. It's I call it the chicken salad bowl. And all it is, and I'm going to back up and close up and talk to you from behind the camera and explain what it is. And this is another great source of low-cost uh, feed for your animals. And again, it, it, as I said earlier, it'll help you to get away from the soy. Okay, now I'm, be I'm behind the camera. And I'm going to... Okay, I'm behind the camera and we're doing a close-up of my chicken salad bowl. And the first thing you can see is... Well, that's nothing fancy at all. It's just a horse trough, a small horse trough, with a grate of chicken wire on a frame over the top of it, held down with rocks. And the rocks keep the chickens from moving that grate because they will get a couple of them together and actually move stuff like that. So you have to weight it down. What I've done is I've taken dirt and filled the, uh, the horse trough with dirt up to about six and a half, seven inches from the um, top. And you can sprinkle any kind of seed you have in there. I just took wild bird seed because we have so much wild bird seed. And I sprinkled about two cups of wild bird seed all in there. And you can see from the close up that it's growing and it's sprouting. And I'll cut away right here and show you what happens when it reaches the point where a chicken can get their beak through that chicken wire. So let's go to that little video that I shot earlier and, I'll, and, and you can get a look at how they, uh, wh what they do. Okay, so that couldn't be any simpler, and you could do almost anything for your chicken salad bowl. Like I said, I used a horse trough here. I happen to have a hole that's out in the um, out in the chicken yard. Um, it's probably eight, uh, probably six feet across, and I'm also going to build the sides of that up with rock masonry, so it looks almost like a fountain. But I'm going to build it up. Put some dirt in that, plant my seed in that, and I'm going to build another chicken wire uh, frame over the top of that. And I just have to water it every once in a while, and as soon as that grass grows up to where they can get their beaks in, just like you saw, they're going to eat it right up. Excellent source of getting them um, uh, 
you know, some greens and some more vitamins, especially the vitamin D in that that they need for their bones. But, um, and of course the sunshine provides that as well. But also, it gives them something to do. They're, they they can get out and um, uh, keep themselves busy just trying to get to that, um, that grass. It's really funny to watch them try to get to it. So, uh, that's the chicken salad bowl. Okay, well, I've got everything almost ready now. Um, I did go out on a rabbit hunt, but uh, in this drought, this time of day, uh, the rabbits are all hiding. So I didn't get any rabbits, so we're going to go with the dog food like I suggested. So let me show you. Here's my bucket. We have some hay that was a little moldy, and um, little Lord Faltonroy, the prince of, prince of equine, doesn't want to eat them. So you put a little bit in the bottom, and that's probably a quarter of the way. Now this is the point where whatever roadkill or dead animal you had that you were going to throw in, you can throw in. If I had a dead chicken right now, I would throw the dead chicken in. Uh, but I don't, so I've got the, I got the pork dog food. And I'm just going to put the pork dog food in. It's frozen still. And for good measure, I got a couple of eggs that are dirty, and I don't want Debbie to have to worry about uh, cleaning a dirty egg. So, shell and all, let the, uh, let the flies figure out what they want to eat. Here's the lid. Put the lid on. And, boy, you have no idea how much I'd like you to be in this bucket, you know that? And now we're going to go out and hang it up and we're done. All right, guys, the, um, the wind's come up, so I apologize, but we're only another minute left in the video anyway. So I've made a hangman here. This is uh, the outside of the uh, what's going to be the chicken yard fence, so this is going to hang just to the inside of it. Uh, so I made a hangman. However you want to hang it, you can hang it from a 2x4, from an eave. Uh, you know, the possibilities are endless. The thing is you want to get it high enough off the ground you won't have predators bothering it and here like I had said we're about six feet off the ground now also what I did and I'm not going to pan down and show you because of the wind but underneath this post when I do my mortar or my cement um, you know for the construction there's always that last little bit you have to clean out and you clean it out and you wet water it down so it doesn't make a very good cement but it does make a decent ground cover and what I did was poured it down underneath here so that when the maggots fall down, they're going to hit that, that bitch concrete. That's the only way to say it. It's like bitch ice up in the Arctic. This is bitch concrete. They'll hit that, and they've got nowhere to go, and a chicken somewhere has seen them fall, and the chicken's going to come and get a tasty 90% protein snack. So there you go. Another cheap way to feed your poultry. And... Like I said earlier, it's a way of getting your flies down because the flies right now around here are really bothersome and they're breeding. And they're breeding, you know, in whatever they can find and they're able to hatch. In this here, their babies are all getting eaten. They'll live a nice ripe old age and die. No babies, no more flies. Of course, we all know that's a lie. We're going to have flies. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning about the chicken salad bowl and my take on a maggot trap. And until next time, it's Robert Earl out at the Eco Ranch in West Texas saying, see you later.